This series of bonus podcast episodes were taken from my nine hour live stream on the 15th of April, 2020. I interviewed 16 speakers back to back whilst on lockdown from the coronavirus pandemic and I thought I would edit them just for you. Hope you enjoy and stay safe, my friends. How are you doing? All right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, totally fine. Totally yeah. fine. Did, have, have you seen Colin before running the Great North Run things like that? No, I've never seen him before. And not forget him again, mate. But no, you uh, will not forget him. Are you just saying there, 75 dresses he has and he, wow. he makes it himself... Um, Oh man, inspirational stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think the beard really sets it off, you know. That well, well not, not just what me. mine or his. Yeah, well, his, his beard. yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of facial hair going on at the minute. Isn't there? there is indeed, yeah, but uh, you must have the clippers to take yours off, dear. I do, yeah. yeah. So I haven't had a haircut, I haven't paid for a haircut in about uh, 20 years, I don't think. So. Oh god. <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of like really like sort of tufty hair happening now. <laughs> Everyone's getting sick. I'm just reading some of the uh, some of the comments here. I don't know if you managed to catch some of the speakers already, Paul. Um, I saw a little bit of um, Laura. Laura, yeah, yeah. Laura's a bag of fun, isn't she? Yeah, no, she's amazing. Um, but no, I've been working, you know. I've busy, some stuff to do, and then I've been, and then I've uh, blocked out me, blocked out me diary for a bit of time for this, and I'll be coming back and and uh, watching some of the the interviews after the event as well. Good man. Well, I mean, it, just in terms of speakers, I mean, we had 16 on April 1st and we've, we've got the dirty dozen today. But speakers mm-hmm. is something you know all about because obviously you watch a lot and you research a lot because of start yeah. a week and, and look what's happened now. And I was so excited to be speaking at the start of the week. And I mean, it would be it would have been getting really close right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Six weeks away. That's yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, do you want to talk about that then? Or do you... <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, well, what I'd like to do is just let people know what you're doing now. It's being cancelled because obviously you've cancelled the, the physical event, but you know, in Newcastle, but you're doing some online stuff as well, though. Yeah, so yeah. Um, obviously, so if, if anyone doesn't know, so the Newcastle Starter Week Festival, so it's, a, it's an annual five day, five night event that's all about um, promoting and celebrating all the amazing things going on across the whole of the Northeast, not just Newcastle. And, um, so this year would have been our fourth event. Um, mm. Over the year, just over six hundred. Last year, just over eight hundred. This year, aiming for a thousand. Um, so yeah, big big events. Been working on it for well, coming on twelve months now. Um, so this period is normally the really exciting bit where things are really ramping up in terms of ticket sales and media coverage and hype and buzz and stuff like that. Mm. And then obviously coronavirus has come along. So um, we're obviously we're not we're not doing the physical event in May, but we we have rescheduled it. We haven't cancelled it. We've rescheduled it for September. Yeah, so, brilliant. Uh, yeah, so the the plan is make sure I get this right. So the plan is to do the physical <laughs> event between the twenty first and the twenty fifth of September, right? So anyone who's already got a ticket for that already automatically gets um, the ticket for that. But then in the meantime. In the original dates in May, I still want to do something to celebrate the the week that it should have been. Yeah. So the plan is to do an online event <clears throat> similar to this, but five days worth of content that we're going to share through our private Facebook group. Okay. We, we've had a private Facebook group for a while. And I haven't really known what to do with it. I haven't really done anything with it, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, so the plan now is... Um, each of those five days, it won't necessarily be a full full day each each day. But the the plan is to um, the, do some interviews with some some of the existing speakers. Maybe the plan is to do some of the past speakers as well because we've had some amazing uh, good idea over the years and bring them back. Yeah, yeah, good idea. And with the, the sponsors as well and the partners, and um, you know, I'll be delivered through the, the group, like I say. So anyone who's got a ticket for Starter Week. People can still buy them now, and they get access to the the online event in May. Um, but also, selling tickets just for the online only event. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm selling them for five pound. Oh come on! Right. Well, yeah, exactly. I wasn't sure how much to charge, but I just thought Netflix charges five ninety nine. Yeah, absolute bargain. So if you if you get one great bit of content, which you will. Then it's it's worth that, and it's. Um, what's, the, what's the website for that? I'm going to put it on the bottom. 
Uh, well, the easiest thing to do is just to go to the Newcastle Startup Week dot com website, and then on the home page, it explains it there. But if you go onto the tickets page, you can buy tickets for either the online event in May, yeah, or the event in um, as well. So yeah, it's like that. Startup Week dot com. But um, yeah. but yeah, just like basically, you know, it's, it's it's interesting how everything that you have planned, everything goes out the window. Yeah. But actually, it's it's given me an opportunity to have a, a real think of, of new, explore new, new ways of doing things. And, mm. and look, I'm never short of ideas. I've got loads of other things that I've been wanting to do and had them on the back burner. But but now I'm trying to trying to make them happen now. Yeah, I mean, what what, what we've spoken about quite a few times, and, and and certainly what I do in, in my talks is is about starting something new and a. And a often the title of my talks is no one's coming to save you and about you know you, you've got to start it no one's going to start it for you yeah. and uh, I was really excited when I saw that was something you were interested this time around for the start week was start something new uh -huh. so I'd love you to tell us a little bit more about that you know what was the inspiration behind that what did you mean by that yeah sure so I don't know if you saw but um <clears throat> sent a newsletter out the other the other day about this, so that that was the subject heading of that. So it's actually a blog on the Newcastle Start Week website as well, if you want to read it. But um, but basically, near the end of last year, I was thinking um, it would be good to have a new overarching theme for for the event for Newcastle Start Week, something that kind of transcended business. Yeah, and got the message across that it isn't just for businesses; it's anyone who wants to learn how to be more creative, more innovative, more entrepreneurial. That that's kind of the whole gist of what Startup Week's all about. Um so I came up I mean, it's not original, other people are using it already, but I just thought start something new is is kind of a good <clears throat> phrase to sum up what what it's all about. And um so I, I started using that um hashtag at the end of last year, I've been using it a little bit more and then what I wanted to be kind of like a rallying cry for, for other people to, to encourage them to start something new, but also a reminder to myself to to not settle and to and to keep pushing boundaries and trying new things. And yeah. If if you're not happy with the status quo and you think there's a better way of doing things, then let me give it a go. And then um, again in this blog and, and news area I've, I've <clears> a <throat> few personal things in there, like at the start of this year. I thought, well, I've got to live by what I what I say here. So I've ended an unhappy relationship. I've moved into a, a new home. I've um, I've rediscovered some old like loves and hobbies, you know. So I'm really getting back into all my old old, old music, listening to all my old uh, music, uh, cooking, Japanese anime, which I'm really into, um, skateboarding. You can see me smiling, telling you the skateboard bit was coming. Yes, good lad. Skateboarding again after thirty years, and this this is something yeah. I've been wanting to do for a few years. But I've had people around me saying, "Don't be so bloody stupid. You look like an idiot if you do that." But actually, why not? You know exactly. Anyway. Exactly. So um, I've been loving that. I'm very heavily padded. I'm going very slowly. I'm not doing anything crazy, but like I'm going out for really early morning walks and skateboard rides. Um, around the city, around the Castle and Gateshead, and, I, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, and touch wood, I've, I've still got it. You know, I'm still, mm -hmm. still there. I'm still pretty good on a, on a skateboard. And the, so, so there's that, and then uh, discovering some new things as well, like um, what else am I into? Uh, got it written down here. Let's have a look. What else am I doing? Yeah, like um, getting really into stoicism. Who uh, our your friend, my friend, Katie Stiddle, she's yeah, yeah, she is, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's something I didn't really know much about. But talking to Katie, I've, I've never met anyone who's so into stoicism as she is, and I'm really into history. And I'm into, and, and when she was explaining what stoicism was all about, I was like, that I think that's me. Like I'm a stoic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know it, right? So really into stoicism. Uh, You're a poet as well. You're a stoic, but you didn't really know it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Get really into spirituality as well. Get more in tune with, with man. as well. Um, yeah. Women more eating healthier. Um, vegetarianism, veganism. You know, I'm, I'm interested in that now. So I'm, I'm, I don't think I could be a full-on vegan, but um, I am eating some vegan food, and I am eating a lot less meat and, and 
choosing to have more vegetarian options, um, especially when I'm living on my own. Mm. Do you think, I mean, sorry to jump in, do you think the living on your own thing has allowed you to start these things or has it been a lockdown thing? And one thing I, I will touch upon is the spirituality side of it. And I think I said this last time when you were on the live that I'm hugging way too many trees. But in, in terms of my spirituality as well, I don't know whether it's an age thing, mm-hmm. uh, a, a, a time of life where things are changing for me as well. But I seem to be a bit more receptive to stuff. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's a bit of both because definitely you move, moving out and into my own place um you start thinking, well, you know, okay, now's, now's the time I am going to be uh, a bit more true to myself and, and what I want to do and, and not feeling like you've got to compromise and make someone else happy all the time. And, and I think that every relationship is a compromise, right? but sometimes you compromise too much or, or so much that you, you lose sight of who you are and what you want to do, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, um, yeah, I think just that is... is Get, got me thinking a lot more deeply about what what makes me happy and what really excites me. Um, so yeah, but obviously the lockdown, you know, that's kind of give, gives you more time, uh, more breathing space to, when you're at home, and you know, having to, all the journey time as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's just forcing me and maybe a lot of other people that I know to to think a bit more more deeply about why they're doing things and. What, what it's all about so I'm definitely feeling like I'm in a really really creative phase at the, at the minute I've, I've got so many things that I'm wanting to do and, and mm. stuff, so I think if we can take anything out of this you know in terms of a positive there's been a lot of people saying exactly the same as, as that Paul you know it's time to reset reevaluate research something new um, test something think deeply and it's it's changing it's, it yeah. maybe Maybe that's Mother Nature. I'm getting way too, way too deep here, but maybe, maybe maybe it's been forced upon us to do that. Yeah, um, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been sharing quite a lot of things on on social media and stuff. But the same thing, it is a good thing. There's a lot of people who are picking up old hobbies again. You know, um, mm. there's also people who are exploring new things. You know, and um, I do think when we come out of this, what I really hope and I think will happen, it already is happening, there'll be this real explosion of creativity and almost okay. like creativity and spirituality and kind of like a, I'm calling it like a new awakening. Right? I, I think it's a new way of living and working and um, getting really thick. Living in the city centre as well as I am now, um, I'm and I'm walking around and seeing all these like empty, like everything shut, literally everything shut. The only thing that's open is supermarkets and pharmacies, right? And I'm looking around and thinking, all these amazing cafes, bars, restaurants, mm-hmm. all these businesses, that most of them are all coming back, right? And thinking, well, what are cities for? What are urban areas for? And can we have a like rethink how we live and, and operate in them? So, um, I'm, I'm looking at where I'm now. There's, I love where I am. It's kind of like it's kind of derelict area that I look at. It's not the most, not the prettiest of views, but I love it because it's, it's the railway bridges and, and viaducts and arteries and stuff. And I'm thinking a lot about um, urban gardens, like um, mm. taking over yeah. unused derelict land and to, like revitalizing it and using it to, to grow fruit and vegetables. Um, not only sustainable and um, ethical uh, type of food, but also the community aspect of bringing people together. And yeah. It's like that and um, helping overcome feelings of isolation and mental health problems people might be having. Mm. So I think there is a real real opportunity to, to rethink all kinds of things right now. And yeah. If you, if you don't, it's a missed opportunity. You're right, now, and, I th- and I really hope that translates into local authorities, councils, people who actually have got the uh, the power to to engage in projects like that, or even you know, like European and fund European fund. A lot of the businesses we work with will be drawing down money to do certain pots of funding in certain projects. Wouldn't it be great if there was pot new pots came out for that very thing that was inspired by this? Yeah. Exactly. I don't, I don't know. Did you see? Um, I've just been stirring things. I like stirring things up and, and, and putting new ideas out. I don't know if you saw something put out about 
a new Northeast Micro Business Fund. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I did see you stirring the hornet's nest in that one, and I loved it because that's why I'll, I'll let you carry on because I love. Yep, yeah, cool. No, no, no. So, so where that's come from is um, so obviously I've been taking, I've been sitting back, I've been absorbing all the information and uh, seeing what support is is out there, right? And there is there is some good support out there, right? But there's a lot of like all the councils, all the business support organisations, they're kind of regurgitating the same information. It's like very top down. This is what central government is saying is available to businesses, right? And a lot of it's not relevant or, or suitable for, for micro businesses, particularly yeah. as well, right? But I've been doing my bit in um, pulling together um, a list of, of funding and, and, and finance that, that's available for, for businesses and putting that on this start of a blog and sending out a newsletter and stuff and highlighting alternative sources of funding that people might not be aware of, right? So that that's going on, right? But then um, a lot of people just, they don't qualify for the business rates relief because they don't have a physical property. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's others that they don't want to get a loan or they, do, they can't qualify for a loan. And then I don't know what the latest figures are, but there was something the other day where I think <sighs> 300,000 people, businesses had applied for a loan, one of these rebuilds mm. loans, but less than 5,000 had been approved. Oh. Well, that's not going to work, right? And, and, and yeah. again, if you're struggling anyway to get into more debt, it just doesn't make sense to me, right? And then also, because um, I, I am involved in various discussions with local authorities and um, enterprise agencies, they're doing what they can, but they they're not business owners. They don't understand what it's like to be a business owner. And I think there is still a bit of an attitude that it's us and them. And kind of, if you're a, if you're a business owner, you're kind of taking the piss a bit or you, you kind of, um, mm -hmm. I, I noticed this in some of the media coverage, it was like, oh yeah, wow, these people who are trying to get handouts and like, you know, they're, they're not paying their due and they're not paying taxes and stuff like that. That's not the case, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah some exception. Anyway, all, the, all this combined, um, in various conversations I've had with people who are really struggling, they're worried they're not going to survive for uh, two months, three months, or whatever. Yeah. So um, I watched the Andrew Marr show on Sunday, and apparently 25% of the economy is going to be gone, right, by the end of the summer, okay, or beginning of the summer, sorry. It's just, it's just, we need to do something quickly and lengthy processes, loan applications, all that, it's, it's just a waste of time. We just need to get stuck in. So I put something out. Why don't we just say, let's give every micro business owner 12,000 mm pounds. -hmm. Like really quick and easy, 12,000 pounds. That's not enough for a lot of them, but 12 grand, I'm just saying like six months, two grand a month, just to just to give them a bit, a bit of breathing space and to tide them over. Yeah. So I put that out. On LinkedIn, that's had 20 odd thousand views. It's like loads of comments. Most people are in favor of it. A few people are not into it, but they're kind of saying they're coming up with reasons why not to give people money. Yeah. Rather than why. Yeah. Right? And then off the back of that, <clears throat> I've just knocked up a type form survey, put it together, um, asked people, right, are you a micro business owner? Which local authority are you in in the Northeast? Uh, are you worried about surviving? And then what's the minimum amount of money you need to keep going for six months? Right? Mm. People are saying that they're worried, right? So there's yeah. 50, 50 odd people who've responded already. Um, 48 of them have said they're not going to survive six months. Most of them say um, they're not going to survive two months, one yeah. month, three months, right? And then the amount of money, it's not a huge amount of money. Uh, it ranges from a thousand pounds up to fifty thousand pounds, right? But I've just added up the total, total here, right? To to keep forty eight businesses going for six months, based on what they said they need, is going to be just over seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. pounds, right? which is a lot of money, but it's not that much money if you've got between the seven northeast councils. If they've if they've got some money set aside to help businesses, right? The the if they don't support these businesses, all of those businesses, business owners, employees, they're going to be on the dole. They're going to be creating yeah. yeah. And then there's the loss to the economy and the supply yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. 
I want to feed the, those that data into the, the local authorities, but I'm also going to try and get some private high net worth individuals to, to put some money in. Mm. And, uh, that, that's my next challenge, I suppose, to see if we can, if we can uh, yeah. save these businesses and keep them going. Yeah, I, I really see a lot of, I mean, I was taught this, uh, I, I did a Twitter poll, this is where this come from, I did a Twitter poll, um, <clears throat> how long can you survive for? And the majority said two months. Yeah. Um, and what I was talking about with one guy is he had six employees, but he was the, he paid himself the least amount of money in that business. Yeah. He took a director's salary, as, as we do, and it's minimal. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically that would be five people or six people in that business that would be unemployed. Yeah. It's the people who are on limited companies that take a dividend and the small minimum wage. You're only going to get 80% of your minimum wage. Yeah. It's 500 quid a month or something like that, whereas other people are getting two grand, two and a half grand. I think you're right. I think you just have to say this is what you're going to get rather than try to work out who gets what and yeah. just make it a bit of a blanket. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. Like, um, you know, like say, just keep it, keep it, I don't know. I was saying just keep it really simple, just 12, 12K, but then some people are saying they don't need that. They just need 2,000. 2, some people say yeah. they need more. But um, yeah, but yeah I, th I think, I don't know, like just it's about the old ways of doing things are gone. For the, mm -hmm. Or the recent old ways of doing things have gone. Um, and we've got to think like really totally different here. Like be really... Things that might have seemed really radical or far-fetched, they're not anymore. Really. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'll tell you what it is, what was really radical. I didn't see the stuff uh, that Rishi came out with and just, I was really stunned actually when I was watching those press conferences. Oh. I didn't think for a minute that, that that would be something that would pull out of the bag. Oh. And it looked good at the start, but then when you start looking into it, you know, sole traders, limited companies, micro businesses, you just start thinking actually, some yeah. people will score, some people won't. And the premises thing as well, you know, people are getting ten thousand pounds if they had a premises. Yeah. Um, and I know that that will keep some people going. Mm. But what about the ones who don't? What about the ones who have a a remote address? You know, where they pay yeah. might pay twenty, thirty quid a month to have a business address, but actually not a premises. They won't be getting the money. Yeah. So yeah. boxes here up, <laughs> but there's lots of permutations, yeah, lots of different things. Because um, you know, again, you know. I think sometimes the 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 public sector, a lot of good good as they are, what they do, it's not their money. Do you know what I mean? It's our mm -hmm. money. It, yeah. We all contribute to to the economy, right? It's we all pay tax. We all we all add value in a, in our own way, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not their money. It it belongs to everyone. So if um and the the negative impact on the economy in the region is going to be huge. It's going to take us back to like the nineteen eighties or, mm -hmm. or maybe because it, by, that was a terrible time for the Northeast in particular, but um, I think this is, could be even worse because it's every region is affected. It's not just the Northeast and other, other areas are okay. It's, it's everyone. So how do we get everyone back to just kind of where they were? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not like yeah. you give them handouts to give them any bonuses or kind of, you, you know, you're just getting them to where they were. Yeah, it's really interesting. I don't know if you caught Emma Lua Buck, who's the MP for South Shields, uh, my town. And Emma raised something I didn't quite think about, even though it was, it's blindingly obvious. But I'm a, South Shields is a coastal town. It makes its money for the year. It's very lumpy. So it makes its money for the year in Easter and the summer, where yeah. all the tourists come. Yeah. And, the, and in, in the autumn and the winter, you're kind of still going through the cash flow that you made in them mm -hmm. uh, buoyant months. If we don't have those buoyant months, how can we survive the, the the autumn and the winter? Yeah, and that, and that's that's not their fault. That that doesn't mean they're not good businesses, do they? No, not at all. Yeah, you can say exactly the same with events. You know, I, I know. Yeah. I knew coming in coming at the end of last year, I knew that um, my business was vulnerable and that it was very heavily reliant on startup week because yeah. about 85, 90 percent of all all the income for the year comes from that one event. It's yeah. like, but it goes in phases where you've got sponsorship. That's kind of the, the beginning bit. Then you get then ticket sales are steady all the way through, and then there's a big, big like uptick in ticket sales near the end. But that's enough to keep keep the business going, keep me and keep keep everyone else, all the supply chain and all the, the freelancers, everyone, AV suppliers, uh, venues, yeah. everybody paid um, keeps us going for twelve months. Basically. Yeah. So. Um, 
yeah, and some people might think, oh, well, you're not a good business because you haven't got enough cash reserves to, to keep going, do you know what I mean? So um, it's the same with tour- yeah, tourism. Every, every industry is affected, but some more so than others. So is there anything we can do, Paul? Is there any, anything anywhere we can help you in terms of that survey or give you any more data that would that would yeah, bolster your I think, argument? I think if it's if if you are a micro business, mm-hmm. so if you're a freelancer or a micro business owner in the northeast of, of England, um, so micro business is not to nine employees. If you just if you just go to like my Twitter account, Lord Lancaster or Newcastle Startup Week, which is this NCL Startup Week. You'll see the a pin to a link to the survey. Yeah, so survey. It's just a really short survey. If if you if that's not you, but you know someone that is, encourage them to, to fill out the survey as well and just just help um, spread the word and also like I don't know, give give the councils a nudge and say, look, have you seen this? And kind of um, I think the next phase is will be to go to. Um, will be to go to the local authorities and also some private high net worth and say, look, one, like, one, one thing I'm thinking is, you know, some people might have a spare 12 grand, right? Or they might have, you know, and they might be happy to just give that money direct to that business and almost become like a, a patron of that business. Adopt a business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why not? You know, some people might do that. And then um, if they're not investors. They just, if they love that business or love what it's all about, if we could find enough people to, to just chip in and, um, and support, each of these businesses we can do it it's um because i don't know like local authorities are in a difficult situation they don't have a lot of money they, they might be restricted what they can and can't do so it mm-hmm. might be more of a of a um community driven like grassroots thing where, they, where the, the northeast people do it for themselves um so yeah just just anything like that and obviously just from a from a more direct personal thing if you want to come to start a week, you know, I know it's not until September, but if you can afford to buy a ticket now, please buy a ticket because that'll keep that keep me going as well. Because um, I'm in that situation where mm-hmm. right, right, right now I've, I've got enough money in the bank to keep me going until the end of next month. Um, I've got other money potentially coming in, but um, I, need, I, need that, I need that cash flow as well myself. So. Yeah, here it is. I, I spoke about that um, just earlier on. There, the some really loyal customers who are still paying subscriptions, even though they're not attending the gym, maybe or, or whatever, just to try to make sure that that's still around yeah. when when things get back to normal. And he, and, and you know, he can even do things like that. look, he can donate a few uh, few quid in the street angel. <laughs> no, <laughs> Keep me in snaps as well. <laughs> I think the key thing is, right, like, understandably, people are trying to cut their costs and, and like, reduce their overheads and all kinds of stuff. But that, that is, you do need to do a bit of consolidation. But at the same time, the worst thing would be to stop spending money. Yeah. Completely, right? So, yeah, people, if they can, wherever possible, keep spending money, particularly with local businesses. Um, if they have an online offer, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, food uh, uh, cafes and restaurants who are now delivering, or you know, the um, yeah, shop local, mm. shop the um, support your independence, your, your micro business owners, um, buy online if you can, buy gift vouchers if you can, you know. Yeah, I did see something today. If anyone can help us in the comments, I, d- I did see an article about um, pubs having an awful lot of beer sitting there that's not being drunk. And then you maybe take a container and they'd fill a container for you and you could, you could take it back home. Um, I thought that would be a great thing to do because, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's nothing better than a pub pint in a rather than like opening a can or a bottle. So if someone can tell us how to do that, send me some draft ale. I'd be more than happy to pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, here's someone who knows all about that. I see you sitting in the green room, our Deb McGoggle. Do you know Deb, Paul? I do, yes. Yeah. Oh, here, here she is. Bosh, Hi. Hey, Deb. You all right? Hi. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. So I'm um, going to kick you out, Paul. Nice. Yeah. Anything, anything you want to leave us with before you go? Um, start something new. Fair today. enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks very much, Paul. See you soon. Yeah.